Good morning, folks. We're going to hit several things today, including the South Atlantic wave swell again. But we also have magnetism and micronova articles. We we'll also have a bit of space weather, and so we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star. We took two more M-class solar flares yesterday, and both were impulsive events. There was peripheral filament eruptive activity around the limbs and on the far side, but the Earth-facing solar quiet has retaken its hold on the sun. More solar flares are possible from the one remaining complex active region sunspot group, easy to spot here on the HMI intensity gram. Sunspots are being replaced by coronal holes and plasma filaments in the eruption watch spectrum here as we head into the next week. Folks, the same ocean swell anomaly is back on the German satellite data, and it is freaking people out once again. I'll try to do this a bit more nicely than I did on Twitter last night. VentuSky and every other data viewer carries multiple sources, and only that one broken German one has the glitch anomaly. There are a few dozen ships in those southern Atlantic shipping lanes at all times, at about 200 in the immediate affected area. No reports of any swells or anomalous waves. None of the buoys in the South Atlantic are showing anything. By the way, the German center has once again apologized for their bad data. Another thing, this big swell out to sea translates to mega tsunamis on every coastline in the Atlantic. Literally every coastal city would already be gone if there was actually anything happening in the ocean like that. Finally, I will once again suggest that the South Atlantic anomaly is responsible for this. Not only is this where most satellite glitches happen, but the cosmic ray intrusion there has the most distortion, and furthermore, it's where the most particle penetration occurs. Penetrating charged hydrogen, smacking the oxygen of the ozone layer, creating a water anomaly in the satellite data. Please, do not get fooled by this over and over again. First up in the articles today, they found the most ancient evidence of Earth's magnetic field. It confirms the oldest estimates of the field existence and suggests the ancient field wasn't all that unlike today's. Good paper up next on the magnetic field effects on plants. It's actually an entire book chapter on the benefits of adding magnetic fields for plant growth, but unfortunately, it has implications for the loss of Earth's magnetic field in the ongoing magnetic pole shift, which will not be so beneficial. Last article today hits the discovery of yet another Micronova. They said I was crazy for discussing Micronova events until they proclaimed they had discovered one back in 2022. Now, they're up over a dozen such events spotted in space. Folks, our big e-magazine drop is only two days away. For those who need the refresher or who haven't been subscribed to the magazine, signing up between now and April 30th will get you access to every issue we've published when we do this drop on the last day of the month. All subscribers will get access to everything all at once. It adds up to more pages than my textbook and has all the most important science of the last 14 months. It's a great way to catch up in a snap and the monthly issues are the best way to stay up to date on the progress of the magnetic pole shift, solar climate forcing, space weather, and more sign up at the link below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.